Where's that beautiful music coming from? I think it might be inside. I'm gonna go check it out. I'm just getting warmed up for my set. Welcome to Crave TV. Hi, I'm Adam Hegstead, chef and restaurateur in the, in the Northwest. I'm all about the people because that's what hospitality is built on. Hi, I'm Chandler Baird, local foodie and lifestyle influencer at Spokane Eats. I'm all about highlighting our local eateries and the communities that support them. Crave TV is a telling of stories through visiting the places and restaurants, meeting the people who make it happen, and talking to the chefs who help create this amazing industry. This is Crave TV. Chandler and Adam, welcome. Hey, welcome going? to Lucky You. Getting warmed up in there. Sounded amazing. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Come on over, want to try some food and drinks? Of course we Great. Do. All right, we're going to ignore this deliciousness. <laughs> Tell us about Lucky You Lounge. Yeah, Lucky You has been here since May of 2019. Uh, our amazing owners, Carly and Caleb Ingersoll, opened this venue. Um, they were also owners of the Bartlett, which a lot of people yes. in Spokane yeah. might know. Great venue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome venue. Um, so yeah, I've been here since the beginning. Uh, started as a bartender, became bar manager and uh, GM at the beginning of this year. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> But it's been quite an interesting ride, obviously, being open for less than a year, COVID hit, uh, we totally closed down for a while. And then when we were allowed to reopen as a restaurant, we weren't able to do live music anymore for quite a long time. <laughs> yep. So our huge bar up here was a big open room. We po popped up that wall, uh -huh. so it didn't feel as spacious and empty. Mm -hmm. Right. And then... The plus side of that, of not being able to do live music, is people started coming in to try our food, which right. it, food was kind of an afterthought. We always had an amazing menu. We've had super talented chefs, but people didn't come here for the food. They mm -hmm. came here for the music, for mm -hmm. the events. So that time where we were only open as a restaurant, people really got to know our food. And then once we were able to start doing live music again, having that wall up really allowed us um, to be open to everyone. So yeah. if folks want to come see a show and have some food, great. If people want to just come in for dinner on a show night, they can. So All it's right. actually been, uh, it's worked out. And now so, people yeah. come and for the food. Here, like yeah. I literally come for the food. It's incredible. Totally. So what do we got? Oh, we've got, we got thank some you, drinks. Maddie. Thank you. Um, for food, we've got some of our most popular items. So our menu is really, it's all over the place in the best way. We've got some uh -huh. classics, some eclectic. Bird. Yeah, thank eclectic. You. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We've got something for everyone. Yeah. Um, one thing I think we really do well, we have a lot of vegetarian options. You do. Um, and vegan options, mm -hmm. and they're really good. So um, one of our most popular items here is a crispy chicken sandwich. Very we, not vegan. Not vegan, <laughs> yes. but we have a vegan version called oh. the Yard Bird. House made. Um, tofu. It's tofu, chickpea, seitan. All so right. all made in house. Yeah. It's amazing. Nice. People love it. Um, and then our classic herb fries. So we've got a tahini herb sauce on top there. Probably our most popular appetizer, the shiitake dumplings mm -hmm. and our black vinegar broth. Those are vegan. That's and really incredible. good. Incredible. And then we have our green curry here. So this one has tofu. You can also do chicken. Um, it's super fragrant, floral. Has yeah, I can a smell really it. amazing. Oh, yeah, you, can smell uh, it. you can smell like when you walk yeah. in the door. Oh, yeah. my gosh. oh yeah. It's a sleeper. I love that one so much. It has a little pickled uh, kumquat relish on top. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's Goodness. Really good. Okay, well, so everything. like if people are coming for a show, you guys do various events. Yep on the weekends, right? Yes, we try to do shows during the week as well. Okay. So tonight we have a free show in our basement bar. Um, tomorrow and Saturday we have shows upstairs and then we have DJs downstairs. Okay. Um, we try to have at least three or four nights of music a week. Um, and yeah, everything from, you know, country, indie, folk, reggae, everything. We yeah. really cool. try to focus on a What variety. a unique kind of venue yeah. here. You have oh this, my gosh. such yeah. a cool bar here. It's so cool. Yeah. The downstairs. The vibe is like perfected. Yeah. I know. You were the, saying like the owners care about lighting and yeah. you know so setting the, the mood art. and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Carly's an artist cool so setting. you can see her art everywhere mm. and then Caleb's a sound engineer so he really got that room uh, yeah. dialed in. He mm -hmm. got all these amazing lights. Um, 
they are cool. so creative. And, and really if people want to know about your shows, yeah. should they look on your website, social yep. media? LuckyLounge.com. Um, Carly is super active at running our Instagram page. Mm -hmm. Always has updates on there. So that's definitely the place to look. And obviously you got yeah. some great cocktails. What do we have going yes. on over here? Yeah. For you, we have a lavender lemonade Yum. with our house-made uh, lavender simple syrup. Mm. Here we've got the Esprit de Mezcal. So right. that's mezcal, amaro, um, oh, yeah, aperol, grapefruit, lime juice. We fresh squeeze all our juices. Oh, that's oh. delicious. Um, this is probably one of our most popular cocktails. It's the um, lavender Tom Collins. So Empress Gin, our house made lavender, uh, simple syrup, oh, lemon juice. And then we've got the, the lavender and the gin goes so, oh, well, together. so well together. Like the aromatics are so, well. so delicious. And um, apricot whiskey sour here. So oh, we wow. use. I just got a party going over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aquafaba, which is chickpea uh -huh. oh, cool. juice instead, instead of, of egg, egg white, mm -hmm. to give us that nice foam. Yeah. 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 Try to mix it's it up really seasonally. Good. Maddie, who brought those drinks over, is our bar manager. She's super creative and awesome. So, yeah, gosh, I feel like y'all are known for incredible drinks, incredible food, incredible yeah. music. Like, you can yeah. really do it all here. Yeah. We try without being pretentious, I think. <laughs> we want it to be approachable, but yeah. interesting. Yeah, you can okay. come and have dinner and then go check out a concert. And... Totally. And you're going to start brunch back up on Sundays? Yes. Absolutely, rolling out a new menu. Hopefully, the sun comes out so we can see people out on the patio. Oh, how fun! Yeah. Well, so cool that y'all could come and revive this space and make it what it is. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty. And awesome. you have parking, which is very and convenient. Yeah, parking. Yeah, <laughs> parking. Yeah. yeah, the um, the marriage between the food and the music is is amazing because yeah. I've yeah, it's I've very been cool. In the, the restaurant industry and the music industry for a long time, so yeah. it feels really awesome to work somewhere that combines the two. Well, we yeah. really appreciate you showing us around and having us here and. Thanks excited so to dig into here. the food. Heck yeah, Absolutely. let's eat. Thank All right, you. let's do it. And I'm going to enjoy my three cocktails. No, I'm just kidding. I'll share. Wow. Well, okay, and join us after the commercial break as we head over to the Elk Public House. You're doing oh such a good God. job eating. Did you hear that crunch? Uh huh. Mm. Mm. So crunchy it makes your ears ring. <laughs> is that a thing? No. <laughs> it is so crunchy though. Like, look at the. Yeah, it looks Bread, really good. breading on that. All oh, those dumplings are really good. Chick-fil-A ain't got nothing on this. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Oh, we're here at the Elk. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do a little cooking back there. Oh, you are or I am? I am. Okay. I'm gonna cook some grub up this all time. All right, so we'll see. Hey, John, how's it hey, going? Chandler, how are you two? Hi, good to see, good to see you. you. Welcome to the Elk. All right, I'm excited to jump back there. All right, let's, let's head it. on in. Let's get right to business. With Kevin, we're gonna be cooking up some grub from the elk. What do you what do you got going for us? Uh, I was thinking I'd do a smash burger and the Korean pork. Uh, oh, I love the smash burger. Korean pork bowl. See the magic happen. I like to get a little salt on there. Okay. And what's the idea behind it? Well, we used to do a moon burger on the grill, and it was uh -huh. a nice char grill burger. Yeah, the yeah. smash burger just is like a really delicious high-end version of a fast food burger, you know? Yeah, so you just smash it down, get that nice crust and sear Smash it down, there. get the yeah. crust on there. Uh, okay. What blend of burger do you guys use? We use an 85-15. Okay. So you have a little bit of fat in there? Yeah. And then this is a, a pork a pork leg that we've sliced and marinated with some Korean marinade. A little okay. salt on that, too. A little chilies and some spices. Mm -hmm. and yeah, a lot, a lot of different stuff in that one, actually. Okay. I'm gonna have to steal your uh, your bent pan here. That's a pretty, yeah, isn't that's that a, a great idea? idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we like to rip this up really good, so you're not sitting there trying to chew your chew and your where, pork. And where did this idea come from? This Korean pork. Yeah. Actually, this was a, a idea that they started at Geno's when we were running Geno's okay. over there as a special, and it just took off so well okay. uh, that we just put it on the menu here. Nice. So kind of a Korean sort of barbecue yeah, spice kind of idea. Uh, my aunt's Korean and uh, she makes her own kimchi, which is absolutely delicious. Yeah. Our kimchi is a, a very shortened version of it. Okay. Uh, this is you not make, fermented make at it? all. Yeah. You know, like the regular kimchi. It's a little tricky with the health department. <laughs> yeah, it's real tricky for the health department. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So with this, we start with some jasmine rice. Okay. And then we just go with the kimchi house right here. Kimchi. Yeah, house made kimchi. Yeah, house made kimchi. A little bit of the Chopped cabbage. Chopped cabbage. All right. This is a daikon radish okay. that we slice. Pickled daikon. Pickled daikon. It's beautiful. 
and just some cucumbers. It's really simple. So you have like a little contrast. You have uh -huh. like pickle, fresh, raw, right. warm rice, cold. Yeah, I think that's a, Correct. kind of a cool way to do it. And then also another thing that makes this dish really delicious yeah, is, the, so uh, is the pickled ginger sauce that we okay. put on here. It's kind of a pickled pickled ginger mayo. Right. So you then have contrast. You have like right. that really lean flavor. And then garnish it with some cilantro. Okay. And that's the that's the Korean that's beautiful. pork bowl. Yeah, check that out. Look at those colors. Steam. Smell that. Smell that. Then with the smash burger, it's a thousand island dressing on both sides of the bun. Okay. A little onion and pickle on the bottom. It's a great island. Right. <laughs> and I love that you guys use American. American cheese, yep. the way melty, to go. delicious. Yep, and classic pickles and onions. Yeah, and okay. definitely some fresh, crisp iceberg on shredded top. Shredded lettuce. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be shredded. Got to be shredded. And then that is our signature smash burger. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I love that you guys grill the bun too. Instead yes. of just toasting yes. it, you just like doing the right. grill. It's it nice and crispy. Right. I mean, look at that thing. That's a freaking beauty. Look at that. Got the corn pasta here. Double patty, American cheese, Thousand Island, diced pickles and onions on a grilled bun. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, thank you so much for yeah, showing us the you. ways. This stuff looks delicious, and we're going to go hang out, talk Perfect. to John, and eat some grub. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good one. All right, just cooked up some grub back there. All right, what'd you make us? We got a smash burger with corn pasta, Korean pork bowl. Those look fantastic. So yeah. we recognize that corn pasta, right? Oh, uh, yes, for sure. It's the famous corn <laughs> pasta. It's the infamous It's all pasta. around, for sure. And I'm glad you chose this because I love this burger. It's so, it's so delicious. Cool. So tell us a little bit about this space. What makes it different than some of your other restaurants? Uh, well, you know, the Brown's Edition neighborhood is so cool. Uh, it's just got a lot of Spokane history. Yeah. This is where... Special. You know, when Spokane was founded, this is where all the <clears throat> people that work downtown lived. That's why there's all the big mansions, a lot of which are smaller apartments now. So it's a little, it's a much more diverse neighborhood. You know, originally it was all just money. Yeah. Um, and it's got, we've got the museum here. So there's a lot of stuff going on down here. Art Fest every year. Well, you're like it's a walk Mac, away right? from downtown. Yeah, the Mac. Mac. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've been here more or less my whole life. My mom worked at the museum. Oh, and wow. I actually used to run the front of the house of a restaurant at the other end of the block here. And at that time, <clears throat> this was still a drugstore. So a lot of people will ask about the, the, sweet drug, sign. the drug <laughs> sign. Um, oh, yeah. And that's why it was a drugstore that was established in 1931. And so when I worked down there, this is before you had a copier, you could, you know, so I would walk down here to make copies for the restaurant and stuff. So yeah, it's been a big part of my life. So I'm really happy to have the restaurant here for sure. Yeah, yeah I love that you've kept a lot of the character, like the drug sign and yeah. like the neighborhood. I mean, there's just so yeah. much. It fits so well. Yeah. 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 I, mean, Look like, I mean, it looks like it's been here for a hundred years because it's like, it <laughs> in fits. The best it way. fits. In the best way. It fits in the best way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's nothing to, nothing really to do you know you got to keep it somewhat original and also in this neighborhood there's you know a process you have to go through to change anything because the whole neighborhood is on the historic oh register. really yes yeah. and i love that like it's so close to downtown but it feels so much more relaxed and laid back like i want to come here and just like hang out for hours in the patio not like have that hustle bustle of downtown like some of the restaurants there kind of have right yeah it is a lot quieter and the patio is really popular in the yeah. summertime for oh, sure. sure yeah for sure. Well, and then your secret little spot in the back, LK. That's right. I mean, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love oh that. Gosh. The cocktails here are just so good. Yep, and LK is great too, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. we're gonna have, Maybe to we'll come have to come back for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. So tell us all your restaurants. So he, right here, the, we're at the Elk now, of course, and there's LK mm -hmm. just located behind, and then up on the South Hill in, yeah. here in Spokane, we have the Two Seven, which is in the Lincoln Heights Shopping Center, mm -hmm. and then in Coeur d'Alene, Moon Time, where we've visited together yeah. before. And uh, in Hayden Lake, we have the porch. Okay. Where I'm a regular. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you are. And a lot of, some of the menu items cross over. Yeah, it tends to be, I would say, 60% the okay. same. You know, there's some of the regular ones that we keep around. Um, gumbo, the 74th Street gumbo is on oh. everywhere. Corn pasta, obviously, everywhere. But then we try to make the menus a little bit different so that every 
one of the restaurants, if you live in that neighborhood, feels like your own restaurant. Yeah. 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 And then you rotate some of those specialty things, like the Reuben will jump around. Or yeah. The yeah. cheeseburger quesadilla has been one of my favorites. Yeah, it's that so comes in. I need to try that. You keep talking yeah, about it, I need to try it. I think it's at moon time right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my wife's favorite thing. It's so so a lot of times I'll take one home when I'm yeah. Smart at man. work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much for having us. Always great to see you. Matt, thanks for coming in. Always good to have you guys here. And, yeah, I really uh, appreciate it. Come anytime. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we should dig in. Let's do it. I mean, I we're just like taunting thing. ourselves. Yeah, like, all right. <laughs> I see why he tastes a lot. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's the American cheese. It's like melty. Mm -hmm. Got like a little bit of that crispiness from the burger mm -hmm. patty, the sauce. Yeah, it's so good. What's the sauce? Thousand Island. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a beautiful heard island. Of it once or twice. Yeah. They also put up in their Reuben. Which <laughs> they do. They do. I know I've mentioned once yeah. or twice. My favorite. The famous corn pasta. Well, wonderful. We're gonna dig in. We won't torture you guys at home watching us eat like this. So <laughs> join us after the commercial break for more Crate TV. We're gonna head over to Brick West Brewing. So we're here at Brick West, checking it out. What's up, guys? Welcome to Brick hey. West. Hey, what's How's up? It going, what's going on? <laughs> Should we head up there and chat? Come on up. All right. First, we have to address the name. Yeah. So, Fro, that's yeah. your nickname? Yeah. For obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. Fro, yeah. It's and it, you know, it's, it's pretty low maintenance. Everyone thinks to see it's going to be taking me a lot of time, effort. No, it just kind of does just what it does. Just roll out of bed so, like that. Yeah. Right. Wow, that must be nice. Yeah. And so, how long have you guys been here? Uh, we opened with perfect timing in January of 2020. Ooh, that is good timing. Yeah, so we had, you know, <laughs> two couple, solid months. Two solid months, <laughs> yeah. and then a couple of years of figuring everything out with yeah. everyone else. Yeah. yeah, but if you can survive that, you can survive anything. Yeah. So now you know, y'all are here for the long haul. Yeah, Spokane really helped uh, not only us, just a ton of other businesses during that time. Yeah. Just make it through. So. Well, I think we've heard that from other people too, is the community really stepped in and yeah. did, really yeah. helped out as much as they could. But yeah. it's nice to, you know, see the light at the end of the tunnel and have some people coming in here. Yeah, and, and enjoy this awesome location you yeah, guys have. You have a huge room down there. You beautiful. have your outdoor patio area. Yeah, I yeah, just want to make it comfortable for anyone in the community to come to know that they can come down here and meet two, three, four, five of their friends and mm -hmm. they got the space to kind of take over and enjoy themselves. Yeah. And it's kid friendly. It is, yeah. Which we love. All ages, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Cool. And, well, you guys have food here too? We do. Yep, we have a small little menu to kind of, you know, some uh, sausages that pair well with the beer, some okay. wraps, just some little bites to kind of go nicely with our yeah. beer as well. Kind of, you know, in that German beer hall style feel of, you know, we got some pretzels, I'll we got some that sausage, thing, yeah. Like it's that sort of style, it's all opened up. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. And, you know, the focus is the beer, but we definitely have the food to support it as well. Cool, so, that's yeah. great. Well, we'd love to see the brewery. Yeah, Can you get a tour? Yeah, let's head down, guys. Okay, cool. okay. let's go. Great. All right, so we're in the middle of the action here. What goes on here? How do, how do you brew beer? Oh man, uh, one, it's a labor intensive process. Okay. Uh, having a beer at the end of the day is one of the most joyful things. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. I'll quit Tarantino day. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so everything, uh, we have our mill room just over here. Okay. Um, so all of our uh, malt that we get shipped in, so via from Germany, um, we have to throw that in via the bags, but we have that gigantic silo on the roof yep. that is filled with uh, American grown barley. Okay. It all comes out of the Minnesota area. Um, that we will then auger over uh, to our, uh, it's called a grist case, and it basically just holds milled grain. Okay. From there it drops into a mash tun. From there we do our series of different mash rests where we're able to create different sugars in the, in the residual beer so it can change the body of the beer and the perceived sweetness later on. Um, from that point, we send it to our louder tun, which that process is, uh, to put it most simply, is you're just rinsing all the sugar that you converted in the mash, uh, in you're rinsing the sugar from the grain and into the kettle, okay. um, since we need sugar yeah. uh, for the to yeast exactly to for the yeast to eat okay. to make Not that alcohol okay. that we all are consuming it for. Yeah. I'm okay. kidding. Um, so it goes from the louder ton once we're rinsing those sugars out uh, into the kettle, and then it depends on beers what we're doing. Uh, some beers are longer boils than others, more stylistic, uh, dependent on that. And then from the boil kettle, uh, we do a process called world pouring. Um, it just takes anything that we don't really want to put in the fermenter and kind of compacts it into a little cone in the center of the kettle. And then that way we have a little bit clearer beer yeah. um, or work before it's we rid of some make of the it debris beer. and some of the other things. Exactly. Uh, the stuff that could create, the yeast could 
eat and then yeah. create flavors, flavors we don't want. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we cool it down. And then once it's cooled down, it goes to these guys behind us, all of the ones with the the con or the V on the bottom, uh, the little conical shapes there. Uh, those are our fermenters. Um, they, the conical bottom allows us to harvest yeast as well as uh, the hops that we're throwing in for dry hops and things like that to drop to the bottom, but still allow us the most surface area on top for yep. cooling and, and whatnot. Since everything that we don't really need- So or, as the yeast dies, it falls down. The exactly. You'll be able to get the, the beer off the top. Exactly, yep. yeah. Great. Wow. Gosh, quite the process. Quite the yeah, process. yeah. But you it, get to enjoy a nice beer at the end of every day. Exactly, it is. It is true. Um, there are days like yesterday when it's eleven hours, and you're like, <laughs> I'm really just tired. I'm exhausted. Yeah, but yeah. having that beer uh, at the end of the day, and you're you're just kind of slowing down. You go, all right, we did it. Yeah, we did it. And knowing that you made that, and yeah. you know, it's special. It is, it is very nice uh, to enjoy your own craft. Yeah, for sure. And um, so how much? So how much beer do you make here? Uh, in a year, we will produce almost 100,000 gallons of beer. Wow. Um, and that's, next year we're hoping to get about 175,000 gallons. That's great. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, should we go try some? Absolutely. Go check it out. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for having us and letting us check out the brewery. That's such a cool process. Matt, tell us about why you're here. Well, I have a, a long history of doing restaurants and bars in Spokane, and I was okay. trying to find a way to take a product and bring it to the community. And since I kind of know the hospitality world, I thought a great way to connect to the community was through a brewery with our large outdoor space and our big, large community tables here. It's a, it's a really way for people to meet up and maybe maybe consider it an adult coffee shop, I guess. Yeah, you got like such a great location down here. It's like so historic, and I think the space itself lends to you know, it's like very open, it lends to the beer hall sort of idea, and I think it's, the outdoor space is amazing as well. Yeah, so. and it was much needed in town, so you really filled the void there. Cool. And I think we've kind of talked about, you know, regional identity, and I think that that sort of ties into it. So we were like talking about, you have local restaurants and beer that's made from here, like all those things I think help sort of, you know, tighten that up and show what Spokane is good for. And I think you guys are doing a great job of that. And really appreciate the effort that you're putting in here. Cool, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching another episode of Crave TV. Join us next week for more.